This week on The Million Dollar Plan, a good friend of mine has written his second book. And when I say good friend, he also happens to be an accomplished uh, business person, consultant, coach. His name's CJ McClanahan. He's joining me on the program now. CJ, welcome to the show. Good to be here as always. Appreciate You've been on the radio it. show before. I have. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you had your own radio show. I you did. got me into radio. I I would basically say I am the reason you're here today. In every way. I, in many ways, that is actually true. Uh, you got me into radio. Was mm-hmm. that 2009? Dear God, Pete, I think it was before then. It was really? a long time it ago. I got hoodwinked time. into this idiotic show, then you got into a different yeah. show. But it, I mean, you loved it, right? We, we both did radio together. If you remember, we did some of those morning shows uh, wait, together. Did we interview Pat Buchanan we together? We certainly did interview Pat Buchanan. Well, that was together. a weird moment in my uh, career. It was kind of, yeah. And uh, I remember being nervous to interview Pat Buchanan. I don't know if you, yeah. you're not nervous now. I know. Sort of stuff, to interview you? No. God, well, I mean, you're me. further right wing than Pat Buchanan, but... Uh, so, <laughs> CJ, for do we disclose things? Uh, you mm-hmm. have been a business coach, uh, uh, my business coach, mm-hmm. for ten years now, right. Mm-hmm. right? And so you know uh, me as well as anyone. I feel like I trust your advice uh, from a business perspective and how to deal with this brain of mm-hmm. mine. And you just finished a book, yes, and sir. it just came out. You have it right here with us. If you could hand it to me now, I if will you're, hand it to you right now. If you're watching on PeteThePlanner.tv, you can see The Overachiever's uh, Dilemma. The Overachiever's mm-hmm. Dilemma. How to break the achievement obsession before it breaks you. In some ways, I feel like you wrote this about me. Mm-hmm. I did. And me. And most people. Absolutely. Yeah. Most overachievers. So where, where, tell me why you wrote it. Uh, it's a great question. So I've been working with executives for 14 years. And I got tons and tons of people coming in and out of my office telling me about this is my business challenge. This is one business challenge. This is my next business challenge. And... After a period of time, we begin to have a lot of success, my clients. And so they would make more money, they would earn more, their businesses would grow, they would work less, they would buy more stuff. And I thought to myself, well, now they will begin to enjoy their lives more. Right. And I, I did not see the correlation. And so about eight years ago, I started scratching my bald head and said, what, why is this not working? Mm-hmm. Why I'm helping them grow. We're reducing the amount of effort they have to put into their work, but every time they achieve a new milestone, there's no happiness. Yeah. I got it. And so I started doing a ton of research on what really causes happiness and what are people really striving for. And I said, growing wealth can't be the only thing I'm doing. I've got to grow satisfaction and happiness and joy in people's lives. And yeah. that's why I went down this path and wrote this book. Yeah, I, uh, so this is certainly in line not only with this show of getting mm-hmm. people to understand themselves and money. Um, mm-hmm. But that's really in line with what I have found as well, right? Of absolutely uh, of this idea that um, you kind of keep moving the goalpost a mm-hmm. little bit when it, when it comes to achieving a certain level of success, and then it takes more to make you happier. Mm-hmm. It's like heroin. It really is. Yeah. I mean, it is more and more and more, and it's just yeah. never enough. It's not completely like heroin. That's a good point. It's not completely like heroin. I don't want those emails. <laughs> don't send me an email. It was a good metaphor. It's, yeah, it was. In you get where I'm going, in a right. different time. Yes. No, but it, like, uh, for me, mm-hmm. because we kind of make this about me. Uh, I, if something goes well, I don't enjoy it mm-hmm. very much. I've noticed that. Well, but you're like every overachiever. Yeah. Yeah. We get that milestone, and we say, as soon as I hit this, I am going to be happy, ecstatic. I will have, quote unquote, arrived. You get it, and you're like, what's next? So okay, let's dig deep into this mm-hmm. then, because I, what I can't understand is. What's the benefit of enjoying it? This is really about you now, truly. <laughs> it is. We, might as, well, we might as well throw down a couch. We've had this conversation yeah. for a long time. Like, I don't understand mm-hmm. how that helps the situation. <laughs> I love it. So we're going to really peel back this onion. Yeah, okay? let, I mean, you're here. Let's peel it back. So the research showed me that what people are really striving for, they can say, I want to grow my business. I want to have financial freedom, whatever it ends up yeah. being, be national, whatever. Okay. Yeah. What people want is a feeling. Okay. What you're striving for, what I'm striving for is a feeling. Ultimately, every decision we make is to feel an emotion. I right. get up today, I go to the gym because I want to feel an emotion. I hug my kids because I want to feel an emotion. I have financial freedom because I want to feel an emotion. I hug my kids so they'll stop talking. And stop hitting one another. Correct? Well, there's a lot of sort of cartoon. Well, I mean, think about this, Pete. You know people keep buying things mm-hmm. and acquiring things because ultimately it makes them feel good. Yeah. People get addicted to acquisitions, sure. dopamine right? dopamine release and yes. Totally. Yeah. So we want to feel something. And if you are never enjoying the journey, if you're never enjoying what you are achieving, what will happen is you will get to 85, like Rockefeller, and you will book, look back on your life and say, I didn't enjoy any of it. I outachieved everyone, but I didn't enjoy it. And is our goal in life 
to acquire and achieve and acquire and achieve, or is our goal in life to enjoy it? Well, I, okay, so th th let's make a distinction between mm -hmm. I, I enjoy it, but I don't, like, roll around in it. All right, and, and there is, it's not an either or. Yeah. So some people think it's an either or, yeah. meaning I, I am either going to be very successful or I'm going to enjoy the journey. And I don't think that's an either or at all. I think you can be successful and enjoy the journey. This is not a, you got to stop working at a certain point. No, 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 no. You can do them both. Absolutely. Uh, so, so this first concept here mm -hmm. of like tr trying to make sure you're, you're enjoying the journey. Like mm -hmm. how, how do you disconnect that? Like in the midst of, of what we have going here in our mm -hmm. offices right now, we've got three sort of major initiatives. Mm -hmm. All of them are, or two of them are in their infancy and mm -hmm. one of them is established. Like I don't, I, do we have to set a marker on one of them and say, eh, we're going to celebrate this when this happens? That's a good point. I would argue it this way. Okay. I would celebrate the day every day, no matter what it is that's going on. Celebrate each and every day, be aware of each and every day and enjoy it. Because what you gotta do first is you have to redefine success. And today, overachievers, you and me, our success is, am I out earning everyone? Am I out doing everyone? Do my peers recognize how much butt I'm kicking? Um, don't you dare say it's not you in any way, shape, or form. It's well, it is us. me in some shape or form, but out earning, I don't particularly care about. Mm -hmm. Most most overachievers do. You are unique, yeah. no doubt. Well, I think I've got that sort of the money. The uh, I'm too deep within money mm -hmm. to view right. it as anything different than just a resource. Right. But I mean, I, I've definitely I've definitely changed with this definition of success, mm -hmm. and I think that's really what we're talking about here. Is yeah. My definition of success is, and I've spent years developing this, okay. is the extent to which I utilize my unique abilities. Mm -hmm. Height. Right? Height. Yes. Attractiveness, obviously. Yes, right. Uh, right. Build meaningful relationships mm -hmm. and enjoy the journey. That's really long. Right. If that's but written like on a it. piece of paper, you're going to Well, think about like you a, for just like a minute. A, like a you started notebook. off in the financial industry. I okay? did. You were a smart financial dude, but you recognize your true passion is entertaining. Sure. That's where you get, that's where you get the most joy is right. entertaining because you're very good at breaking down concepts and entertaining people. So you're one of these unique people who said, I can make a lot of money in the financial business, but I'm going to you take my unique skills and I'm going to jam it with what it is that I know right. and I'm going to do what I love. And that's why you're so passionate about what it is that you do. But, but most people and, don't do this. So I feel, okay, so if we're using your definition. Mm -hmm. Which we will and, and forever. Just getting weird, we, let's get a little weird about this. Mm -hmm. Then I would say, well, I'm, I'm successful, but I also don't see the point of saying, hey, y'all. I'm successful. Like, you, I don't see the point. You don't have to say it to others. Just feel it in your own. You, you um, want to feel, Pete, yeah. the goal is to feel as though you are making a meaningful contribution in your life and in the lives of other people. So and there are people, really clearly, and this mm -hmm. is so poorly phrased, what mm -hmm. I'm about to say. Uh, it's it's already in my head. It's, mm -hmm. it's not good. Mm -hmm. um, there are people that don't feel like what they're doing actually matters. And, oh, and, God. And, yeah. Right. right. I know that. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Pretty pretty uh, dim mm -hmm. perspective there. But um, And I, I would actually feel that. I, I felt that way, too. My, my When I think of success, my first thing, I go to financial success as mm -hmm. part of that. And it used to be for me to uh, make as much money as I needed to to mm -hmm. do the things I want, which is turns out it's a bad definition. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Not good. Uh, now I'm uh, to eliminate as many obligations as possible. Mm, I love that. I mean, it flips it. Yeah, um, but so. that's very healthy. And you and you would argue because you know lots of people and you guide and, and mentor and coach lots of people and nationally, Pete, that most people don't have that healthy of an outlook on money, do they? No, no. I mean, I was in it with a group of financial advisors the other day, probably thirty of them, and. I always, I always like to call out an audience like that. I'm like, okay, look, you guys know more about money than 99% of people in mm -hmm. this world. Like, but what are you doing? Like, oh, no cap. Yeah. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. I was with, uh, um, I was at this huge conference for financial uh, wellness offices, college financial wellness mm -hmm. offices in Minneapolis this week. And again, these are people that every day teach millions of students about money. Okay. But the real question is, okay, so you know all this stuff about money. Are you actually doing anything? Are they? No, of yeah. course they're not. Because they're not like, like, like everyone you say. Yeah, it's not interesting. And, and so the question eventually becomes, how did we get this way? Right? What happened that got us to this point in our lives? And the reason is, is because we're wired. In second grade, you were put into a special class to right. tell other people you were better. And the next thing you know. That's true. For all of us, right? We're yeah. overachievers. Yeah. And then you keep going, keep going, keep going. And now we're Sorry. wired yeah. to feel 
The only way we feel good is when we are out doing others. That's just the way we're. Well, wired. that's why Instagram and Twitter and the likes and the and I know on the show. About Absolutely, that. yeah. It's well. Let's do this. Let's take a break okay. uh, and, and uh, come back after the break. We'll talk more about your new book, The okay. Overachievers Dilemma. I like the size of this. Mm -hmm. Thank oh, you. Look, my name's on the back here. You're a big shot. Um, and this seems like it would sit nicely on the back of a toilet. That is, many people have called it a, are we allowed to curse? A uh, I'd rather you not. Okay. Well, you know where I'm getting. Many yes, people yes, have yes. A bathroom reader. A bathroom reader, yes. All right. Uh, coming up after the break, uh, more with C.J. McClanahan, author of The Overachiever's Dilemma. What's the name of your other book? Thrive. Thrive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got that around here somewhere. It's around here somewhere, yeah. It's a doorstop. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, so we'll be back right after this. I'm Pete the Planner, and this is The Million Dollar Book. <laughs> Back on the Million Dollar Plan here with uh, C.J. McClanahan, author of The Overachiever's Dilemma. If you're watching on PeteThePlanner.tv, you get to see the book cover. If you're listening on the radio or on the podcast, go to PeteThePlanner.tv. I mean, it's really that easy. Uh, are we giving away one of these books? We're giving away a bunch of these books. We're giving away a bunch of these books. Yeah. So go to PeteThePlanner.com slash blog. Mm -hmm. That's where we'll have information. You can win uh, some of these and, and it's worth noting, mm -hmm. you are... Uh, Donating all the proceeds mm -hmm. of yep. this book to an organization. Tell yep. me about that. It's called uh, College Mentors for Kids. It's an organization I've been involved with for about, oh my gosh, probably eight years. I've okay. been heavily involved with their leadership and What do they do? What they do is, so you know what Big Brothers Big Sisters is? Never right? heard of it. Yes, so you do. You <laughs> have. So they go and they mentor people yeah. at risk youth. So okay, what sure. College Mentors does the exact same thing, okay. except they go on college campuses and they find college students to mentor at, at risk youth. So what they do is they'll go to a ball state or wherever it is, yeah. and they will drive kids, they will get a bus, they mm -hmm. will go to a school in an at risk neighborhood, mm -hmm. and they will drive those kids onto the college campus so the kids can see the college campus. Yeah. The reason I love them is because it's not just helping the kids, right. but it's creating a group of college students who are passionate about giving back. And that's what we really need. The last thing we need is more millennials coming out feeling entitled. We yeah. want kids to come out and say, I'm going to give back as soon as I graduate. Totally not the point of this conversation, <laughs> but I have to uh, bring it up. Uh -huh. um, you know, people talk about millennials being entitled, which mm -hmm. I don't think is exactly true. Mm -hmm. It's not all of them. I, I read this article that, that said it entitles the wrong mm -hmm. word. It's expectant. Ah, okay. Which I think is smarter because it, that's not a negative quality. It's mm -hmm. I expect things to work out for me because they always have. Mm -hmm. Entitled has this negative connotation okay. to it. Um, anyway, no one cares. Um, where are we going now? I mean, tell, tell me, within the book, mm -hmm. there's a particular idea that we need to uh, live gratefully. Yeah. I so mean, it seems reasonable. It, it does. And, and if you were to... Most people will tell you they think they live gratefully, Pete. But unfortunately, what we have, especially with overachievers, but basically the West, United States of America, yeah. we wake up every day and I say to you, how's your life? And you are going to scroll down everything in your life and your brain's going to find out one thing that's not going perfectly. Yeah, so in the Delta Sky Club yesterday, mm -hmm. a guy was eating an apple really loudly mm -hmm. and it upset me. It's, it's just human so nature. So I'm in an exclusive club. Yeah, in a, th a country in which apples are readily available, mm -hmm. and I'm upset about the the, the loud uh, nature of the situation. You know, that's not grateful. There was a meme. There's this meme that came out years ago, I think, and it was these kids. It, it was all over the the internet, and it was a mm. kid eating or eating uh, or drinking water, and it was a third world country, and he could barely get a glass of water that day. And the meme was something like, "I really am sorry that you can't get." the clothes you want at yeah. you know the gap today or whatever it ends up being it seems dark yeah no kidding why'd i bring it there thanks okay sorry about that so let me uplift it a little bit the fact great gratefulness and gratitude is just simply an outlook that you have on life okay and so if think of it as a pair of glasses and so the information that you take in your brain every day you can look at it gratefully or you can look at it from a i don't have enough perspective and it's tricky I mean it is hard it, it to switch is that tricky and so i guess there's going to be different levels of this like mm -hmm. Like let, let's say I don't describe myself as grateful, yet I also don't describe myself as needy mm -hmm. or I need more. I need more. I mean, is, right. is that is that the what's the spectrum? It's, it's a huge spectrum. Grateful to what's the other side of the uh, spectrum? Grateful to but everything don't say stinks. Ungrateful. Everything stinks. Everything stinks. Okay. Oh my gosh, my car is bad. My yeah, clothes are bad. Like I don't have any hair. Debbie Downer, yeah. negative Nelly. Where are these women's names? This yeah, is no really kidding. Comfortable. Go ahead. Very much. Wait, it, is, Go ahead. it is. It is. We're wired to acquire. We're wired oh, to be better. Did you write that line in the book? I did not. No, you can no, trade. Oh, like do a second version. No, no kidding. That's we the... are wired <laughs> to acquire. 
easy tag. So think about that, That's though, Pete. Really Every good. day you, you wake up and you say to yourself, today is a good or a bad day. Now, are there days that I complain and moan and groan about yeah. what I have to do? Absolutely. In fact, I do it three days a week. But my goal is to say, wow, I get to get in a car that has air conditioning, buy a cup of coffee, eat a bagel, whatever it is, drive to Pete the Planner's office, yeah. do whatever it is that I get to do. I'm a blessed person. It's a shift, but your life will never be fulfilling or joyful unless you look at it from a grateful and perspective. And that's a decision. Oh, gosh, yeah, absolutely. But I mean, but to, to, to go down that path, mm -hmm. it's like, I'm going to do this mm -hmm. as opposed to, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. you know, this is sort of related mm -hmm. where luck gets involved with a person's success. Oh, no doubt, yeah. So... I have to, it's when I have these conversations with good friends on mm. my show that I always, uh, at, I'm at risk of being a little too transparent, Be, but I'm going to do go it there. anyway. We can always edit. Uh, no, we won't. Okay. Uh, so I, uh, <laughs> too much work. <laughs> I, I didn't believe in, in luck for a while. Mm -hmm. Like, which when you say that, mm -hmm. it means everything I did is what I did. Right. Like, I got, I earned it all myself. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. not good. No. Right. No. So I, I've really just come to this conclusion recently where I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm just lucky. I'm going to be honest. Plays a part. Yeah, I mean, there's hard work, but yeah. a lot of people work hard, but they didn't have no doubt. sort of just the the systemic opportunities that I've had. No, oh, yeah. When I was 27 years old, a guy hired me to run an $8 million company with two other guys. I had no experience. I was coaching his daughters in basketball. I didn't know anything. It was completely lucky that, that I knew him. It was a terrible decision. It was awful on his part. Can you believe he did Is that? Is he in jail? No, he's very successful. He saw something in me I didn't see in myself. Yeah. Oh. And, um, but it was luck. Yeah. I didn't submit a resume and I outdid a whole bunch of other candidates. If you would have seen my resume next to people who actually deserved the job, I would have never gotten hired. Yeah. But luckily, I was connected with him. Luck plays a huge part. So, now. okay, let's dig into this because to me, you can, luck is important to acknowledge, mm -hmm. or I feel like it is right. now for where, where I'm at. But then it almost feels. Are you supposed to say, well, just work as hard as you can until luck hopefully takes hold? Is that where we're going? You have, Sounds like a success about poster. Yeah. That is a success poster. Right. Your, it's your like, picture can, can What is it? it? It's uh, when hard work and, and meets opportunity. Meets opportunity is success. With that voice, though? Yeah. Okay. This one. So I would love for you to do the Ray Lewis voice. Not right now, but it's something. Okay. It could get, no. Okay. Sorry. Back up. Yeah. Think about this concept of luck. Okay. Your goal in life is to chase. Chase is the wrong word. To strive to achieve something. Okay. Right. Luck is going to play a role. But or some not people don't even. Like we. Uh -huh. I, some people don't even believe that. No. Some people just believe I wake up and just try to get to five p.m. Mm -hmm. it is. So so okay. Uh, your goal in life is to try to accomplish something. Mm -hmm. Daily, whatever it ends up being, yeah. you got to be pointing in some direction. You have to be pointing in some direction. If you don't, you're just going to aimlessly wander around yeah. and be on Facebook and Instagram all day long. I've had those little periods in my career where it feels like I just wander around Normal. aimlessly. Yeah. And I don't. And again, you think you're wandering aimlessly, but your brain is is attracting information, and you're learning. It yeah. seems aimless, but you are learning. And ultimately, Pete, we're just. We're big computers, and all we're doing is assimilating data and utilizing that data to make decisions as we go forward in life. I remember so early when we'd worked together. This is back in the late 2000 aughts. Mm -hmm. Is that how you say it? I don't think so. But 2008, almost, 2009. Yeah. I mean, we're setting some really big goals, mm -hmm. and, and you would say to me, uh, when you're making a decision about your business, the decision you're making is, is this process... Mm -hmm. uh, on the road or off the road to those goals, or sort of, is it keeping me on track? Of when you make a daily decision, I'm like, will this help me get to there? Mm -hmm. No, then don't do it. Right. Right. And, but that being said, the ultimate objective and goal needs to be a really healthy objective, oh, and it doubt. needs to be get excited about well, it, well thought out. Mm -hmm. But that was that's always been really helpful for me. If when I'm about to do something, and now that I think about it. I made a business decision last year that I've since regretted. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I would have asked myself that question, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have done it. It would have saved a lot of money. Yeah. It, it, today, I mean, tangent number 11 for us, but today, yeah. Pete, you and I and everyone out there, but especially you and I as individual entrepreneurs, we are presented with 172 opportunities every day to try something new. Yeah. Our responsibility and the responsibility of everyone listening and watching is to determine what's really essential. Mm -hmm. what, what should I do? Not, not do everything, but what? because I want to say yes to one thing and no to 171. And the decision to say no is as important as the decision to say yes. 
Sometimes I don't think people find that inaction is an actual decision. Oh, God, no. They, they think, yeah. I gotta be going, gotta be going, gotta yeah. be going. Yeah, it's craziness. Yeah. Well, both in a good way and a bad way of mm-hmm. like, if, if things are going poorly for you, and this is, again, uh, just a statement that I'm gonna end up regret saying, mm-hmm. if things are going poorly for you and you don't try to make a change, that's a decision. No doubt. Mm-hmm. But that's also not to suggest that it's your fault, right? Because sometimes circumstance takes you down mm-hmm. that road. So live gratefully. Yeah. And, and living gratefully just comes down to the basic concept of waking up every day. And it is so simple. It is the glass half empty or half full. It is yeah. simply that. You know, my, um, so, you know, my father passed yeah. away recently, a couple yeah. months ago. My dad and I were unbelievably close. He was my best friend. It was sad. And so when I think about him, I get sad. Yeah, I know. I do. I just get sad. However, my brain now is, I'm, tra- I'm not sure if I did it or how it's happened, but my brain almost always tilts to, but he lived to be 77, yeah. and I had 46 amazing years with him. So you're able to flip the switch to all that's good with that situation so as opposed I, to the loss. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it from a great... Now, I'm not saying there are some days I'm like, yeah. this is this is crap. Yeah. I don't see my dad anymore. But there yeah. are days I'm just like, man, a lot of people didn't have 46 great years with their dad. Yeah. I don't have bad memories. So I'm grateful for that. But it takes me building that gratitude muscle to look at it through that perspective instead yeah. of just being sad about it all the time. I, it's, as we go to break, that's an interesting way to say it, that you build the gratitude muscle, mm-hmm. that it's a process. Oh, yeah. It doesn't happen overnight. Uh, coming up after the break, uh, more with C.J. McClanahan as we talk about his new book, The Overachiever's Dilemma. Where can people buy this? Uh, they can go to Amazon.com or they can go to CoachCJ.com, whichever you prefer. CoachCJ.com mm-hmm. or uh, Amazon.com. And uh, we'll tell you more about this book and about C.J. after the break. I'm Pete the Planner, and this is The Million Dollar Plan. <laughs> Back on the Million Dollar Plan with Pete the Planner, uh, joined in studio, C.J. McClanahan, the man who got me into radio. Mm-hmm. That's right. You, mm-hmm. you and Tom Hervey. Tom Hervey. Tom Hervey. Blast from the past, baby. Uh, so C.J. just finished his uh, second book, The Overachiever's Dilemma. His mm-hmm. first book is called Thrive, mm-hmm. and uh, that's good. Yeah, it's good. Sure I like the that. feel of this book. Like it is it. called a matte finish. Paper. I know. I was about to say, I like the matte. Yeah, I made that executive decision. It's good. Oh, there's a cartoon in here. Yeah. Business cartoon. I'm not kidding around, dude. Look at this business cartoon. Um, it's a one cartoon book, by the way. I'm is that the only one? One cartoon book. That's yeah. the one you were like, this illustrates my point. Yes, if, if, if anything else, this gets it across. This is just like the New Yorker. Uh, and you say in your book, and mm-hmm. I know you live this too, mm-hmm. by the nature of the fact that you're donating all the proceeds of this book, mm-hmm. give generously. Yeah, it's... Um, and this helps overachievers. Oh, God, it is... It, the, the data is clear now. Okay. And it, I, there's a guy by the name of Dr. Stephen Post. He's written a lot of books, and he has an institute that studies this now. The, the very uh, research-backed benefits to giving... Okay. Okay. Now, most people give, and they say to themselves, as soon as I have time, as soon as I have more money, I will give out of my uh, abundance. Quick Mm T.O., I've written about this before, Mm -hmm. in the same direction you're about to go, uh, and like always happens with people who read things on the internet, uh, people were like, no, Peter, you give because it's the right thing to do, not because of how it benefits you. And I'm like, you're missing (laughs) the point. Bull crap, yeah. But go ahead. So, I mean, this is, I'll tell you the story. So, uh, there's a classic example at College Mentors for Kids. So, I, I've, we've donated money to them and helped a lot, so on and so forth. So, I was in front of the board about a year ago, and the board is, you know, they're doing this, oh, thank you, CJ, you're yeah. such a nice guy, we're so appreciative, blah, blah, blah. And I said, thank you, here's the deal. I give to you, I speak for you, I donate time and money to this organization because it makes me feel good. So you can give me praise and pats on the back, but the fact of the matter is I'm doing it for a selfish reason because right. I get enjoyment. I feel great when I do it. Right. And my point in the book is that unless you learn to give first, unless you learn to give generously, all you're going to do is keep acquiring for yourself. Yeah, okay, so there's a couple things there that we should unpack. Number one, I think that also illustrates the difference between proactive and reactive giving. Mm-hmm. You're talking about being a proactive giver. Oh, totally. Not, not waiting team. for st- your friend to come along and say, hey, I'm running a 5K. Can right. you sponsor me? Like, no one cares. Or the Ice Bucket Challenge. Sorry. But right. I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. Did a lot of good. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And then the, the second uh, idea with that too is our end all be all in life cannot be our own material success. It just can't be. Well, it could, but you're never going to feel the joy and contentment that you were designed to feel if it is yourself. And you can see people in the public eye, and we're not naming names, mm -hmm. that li try to live it that way, mm -hmm. and it's certainly outpacing everyone else. No doubt. Mm -hmm. But they just seem miserable, like miserable humps. Oh, gosh. You yeah. Know? It, let's not go down this path, but if you read the Steve Jobs book, which mm -hmm. he's a, obviously one of the most amazing entrepreneurs to ever walk, sure. but he was not happy. Yeah. He was not. It was always more, 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 more. Um, at some level, it can't always. I mean, we're going to get into religion here, Pete, yeah. but at some level, a creator created us. Mm -hmm. Someone. I think he just got into. Oh, anyway, right. go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And, and that creator fun. wired yeah. us and designed us to give. Mm -hmm. And that is why when you give, you feel good. Right. You are. We are wired to feel good when we help someone who has a need that we can do something about. So. You know, at some point, very, 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 very wealthy people cross over to ph philanthropy, mm -hmm. <laughs> like formal, I'm mm -hmm. a philanthropist. Right. Uh, I know this is not the point of what you're saying, but that seems like it, it's an effort to give better than other people give. Yeah. And, and again, you're trying to out-achieve people in the way in which you give at that right. point. Yeah. Uh, it, it's good, right? And I'm not, yeah. I'm not knocking philanthropists, but you're, if, I would love the philanthropists who give and no one knows they give. And they're out there. There are yeah. philanthropists out there in the marketplace who give tons and tons of money away, but no one knows that they do it. You know, I've, I've struggled with that idea of, like, mm -hmm. maybe if I make my giving public, mm -hmm. it encourages others to give. Like, it can. I, I, and it, that's both worked for me and backfired. We've, we've raised well over $100,000 in the last few years on Twitter mm -hmm. for different causes sure, by absolutely. this sort of idea. We raised 40 some thousand for Wheeler Mission because mm -hmm. it snowed a lot uh, by getting other people involved. But on some level, uh, it's a little bit of, look at me. I can, you know, so utilizing your platform, which is large, to help bring a cause to the forefront and help raise money, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. However, if that's the only way you ever give and you do it for purely selfish reasons, you're not going to get the joy that you should be getting from the giving. So I, I have my scholarship at Pike High School for mm -hmm. a first-generation college student, which I, I fund. Mm -hmm. um, and I had someone tell me recently that they thought that was a good idea, so they started one at their high school. So to me, not bad. Th yeah. in that moment, that mm -hmm. proved to be an effective use mm -hmm. of a public platform. You, the difference, Pete, is that, again, it's like building a gratitude muscle. Living gratefully and giving generously. So giving generously is a mode. It is a way of thinking. It is not something you do sporadically. Oh, someone invited me to a black tie event and I did a silent auction and bought some stuff I didn't need. Sure. That is one-time giving, but it's not having a giving heart. You are wired to just make giving part of what it is that you do. Yeah. You know, I, um, I, I distinctly remember this. I was trying to raise money for uh, Families First last year and I, I showed you that video. Yeah, yeah. You gave me $300. Yeah. A minute later, and you didn't do it. You didn't pat yourself on the back. You didn't share. It I on meant Twitter. to type thirty. I <laughs> think I hit the zero. I'll get you a check. Later oh today. boy, this got weird. The, but my point $300. is three hundred dollars. My point is that's who you are. Oh, okay. You give, yeah. right? It is part of who you are, and it is part of the reason why you probably get more enjoyment and satisfaction out of your life than many, because you don't give to check a box and put it on Twitter. You give because that's where your heart is. I don't like to say mystical phrases mm -hmm. that can't be proven but i have to say something and you can you can stop listening now if you mm. want but i feel like never have i given and then worried about money thereafter right this mm. idea of what's well, going to come back to me like mm -hmm. I, I don't know it's a little mystical and mm -hmm. weird for me but i have to say never have i given and regretted it thinking Man, I could have used that more towards my own financial goals mm -hmm. or my own financial desires. And very yeah. unscientific study. So I've asked that question a thousand times in my life. Have you ever regretted giving? Zero times have I heard someone saying, "Oh, someone gets super hammered at a black tie event and buys a six thousand dollar, you know, dog or something stupid like yeah. that." They regret I, that. I, yeah. I've seen that. I haven't done that, but I've seen. I've, I've been the auctioneer when that's. It's happened. moronic. However. No one goes, man, I wish I wouldn't have given that money. We yeah. always know that it, it's doing something better. And the fact of the matter is you only need so much money. And I think the other point of this too, and, and, and for people listening that are like, I don't have any money to give, not the point. Because mm -mm. there's other time. I Absolutely. mean, my, my dad's a, a good example of that. But when, when he uh, retired and decided to donate a lot of time to a um, – 
crisis line, which mm -hmm. is uh, the, the, we used to call those suicide hotlines. Now mm -hmm. we call them crisis lines. Right. Uh, and now he he works there. But I don't know. He uh, he was on call seven thousand hours. That's not a made up number. Mm -hmm. Seven thousand hours last year. Seven. Th there's only eight some thousand hours in, in mm -hmm. a year. Seven thousand hours. Insanity. And and he didn't. He did it. And if I sat down and talked to your dad, who I love, by yeah, the way, quite you. a bit more than you, yeah. if I sat down and talked to him, I would say, why do you do it? He wouldn't say because I want to give back to others. He would say, if I got him, if they injected him with true serum, because it makes me feel good. Yeah. He would say that because Man, it does. I wonder if you could get him there. He, at some level, we know giving makes us feel great. And if you, if you give out of soon as I have time to give, you'll never get the feeling. You've so, got to give to a point where it hurts a little. So the, the, the dilemma of overachievers basically is that you, you're just never satisfied. Never satisfied. You never get that feeling. And, mm -hmm. and, and so what we've just discussed on, on today's episode is things like giving mm -hmm. can bring you that feeling. Oh, Gratitude yeah. can mm -hmm. bring you that feeling. Redefining success can bring that feeling. So I encourage Absolutely. people to read. The Overachiever's Dilemma, it's a nice handheld size. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's uh, good. You can put it on the back of your toilet. Yes, you could. Yes, I wouldn't talk about or what that would mean. Slip it into your purse and read it on a flight. Absolutely. You could do just about anything with that. Give it. Where is a hat? I'm sorry. Are you going to cut the rest of your hair? Well, you and I have talked about this. this I don't know. I feel like I've got Where, a, a couple you years up? left. You think you got a couple years left? Stop it. I don't like you. <laughs> sorry. Um, CJ McClanahan, coachcj.com. CJ McCoach on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> the worst Twitter handle in the All world. All the good Twitter handles were taken. CJ McCoach. <laughs> what a terrible Twitter name. Uh, buy this book. Proceeds go to college mentors for kids. Uh, coming up after the break, I'm going to let CJ pick the uh, Buam, biggest waste of money of the week. I'm Pete the Planner. This is the Million Dollar Plan. <laughs> Back on the Million Dollar Plan with Pete the Planner. Biggest waste of money of the week coming up here in a second. I have to say, <laughs> CJ was on the road this week. Mm -hmm. had, a lot of, had a big tortas week. Really? I had two tortas this week. Oh, lots of carbohydrates. I had a torta in Minneapolis mm -hmm. at this hole in the wall. It was delicious. And I had a torta in the Chicago airport at uh, Frontera Grill. What do they put on a torta? Is it torta is a Mexican sandwich. So it's basically like all your burrito fillings right. in, like a, in a sandwich. Hmm, interesting. I never had one. I can give it a shot. Oh, tortas. The tor there's a tortas place in Fountain Square, Fletcher Place area. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I don't know what it's called. Tortas. Tortas. Anyway, right. biggest waste of money of the week. CJ, as the guest of the show, you get to choose what it is. What is it? I love this. The biggest waste of money of the week is something that I did probably within the last year, and it is called buying the Monster Cable. You bought the Monster Cable. I did. I returned it. But I will tell you, I bought the Monster Cable because you're in there, and the Monster Cable, if you don't know what the Monster Cable is, it's just a cable that hooks your TV to your DVD player. An HDMI cable yeah. manufactured by Monster. It just hooks them up. And so a regular cable is, you know, eight bucks. Sure. Monster Cable is like a hundred. Right. And the guy tells you the colors are going to be crisper and all this other yeah. nonsense. It's a complete fabrication. Yeah. No one needs the Monster Cable. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's, it's a huge waste it's, of it's money. It's insanity. But biggest waste of money, I tell you that. Uh, Nicole, the, I know this week we were running that ad for Monster Cable. Can you just tell them we're going to need to cancel the sponsorship deal? That would be that would be good. That's so uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, all right, CJ. I want people to go to CJ, coachcj.com. Mm -hmm. right. uh, I feel like you've had a lot of web addresses over the years. I have. This is the, We're not ever going to another web address. I give you my word. Coachcj.com. Mm -hmm. Go to Amazon.com. Buy this book. And then also, uh, if, you're, if you're cheap, mm -hmm. don't go to my site and we're going to give some away. Absolutely. We'll give a bunch away. Thanks, man. All right. Feel it, blessed. It's going to be Thank fun you. to read this because uh, and this just came out. It's going to be fun to read this. Because I feel like it's going to be all the things you've been telling me over the last well, 10 years. Oh, we got a story about you in it, believe it or not. Oh, boy. Do yeah. you name my name? I do. Oh, boy. Yep. It's not about the time where I punched. Yes, oh, it boy. is. Sorry. <laughs> CJ McClanahan, thank you. Go to CJ.com. That's it for this week's show. I'm sending you good vibes because good vibes are all that's in the budget. I'm Pete the Planner. It's the Million Dollar Plan. This is where I came from. Planet Love Tribe, where we drop love bombs, funk missiles, and live in soul shelters. No help to skelter. The heat don't swelter because everybody stays cool. Left many moons ago to bring the philosophies of my ancestors to another place, God. 
Picked the third rock, gave me to my earth family and told me to create. And so I am. Pin in my hand, microphone on the stand. Over vinyl, I command and demand. Magnificence in an instance, I can make you dance, cry, or love. Fly as a dove, released from Everest. The fresh is fresh, and you can call me E.T. Word to John Tesh. Let me bless this harmonic presentation. It's amazing, so amazing. I'm the reason. Uh, salutations, I bring you love, trying greetings. From a far away land, I am the soul controller. Put the remote down and let me take control. You're now a part of my zone, so enjoy yourself. Love Tron can restore your health. I bring you greetings, uh, salutations. How you doing? And is that how y'all say it? The tinkling of the keys is an homage to the little, little star. I sojourn over poetic descriptions of sound and travel to my other world. Out of this world, spaceship on my arm took me home. Filled by the ink and the megabytes and the hypertext transfer protocol stronger than the Skynet and the Terminator. I push faders into warp speed, glide with.